Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a requested one. In today's video, I am going to talk to a former BSMS student who is going for his PhD in Boston, US. And he will be talking to us about his BSMS journey in Isa Trivandrum. He will be talking about the coursework, pros and cons of doing BSMS in Isa. And in the end, he will be taking us through his PhD application journey. So don't go anywhere, sit back and get all your answers. And if you still have queries, you can put it down in the comment section below or you can DM me on my Instagram. I try hard to answer all your questions. So let's just start. Hi Krishnanan, thank you so much for agreeing for this. Uh, thank you for taking time out to talk about your BSMS journey in ISO Trivendrum. So to start with, uh, how did you land up in ISO? Were you always interested in research or were you preparing for J? Take us through your initial days. Uh, I was in fact preparing for J, but at the same time I focused more on uh, involving into science. So I, I wanted to do BS or uh, BSMS or integrated MSc, such kinds of programs. So I, I, okay. I, I was sure that I'm not going to do any engineering program. Uh, oh, okay. So, uh, so I also looked into engineering physics program, and also I got admission at mm -hmm. engineering physics. Then only I got this ICTVM uh, admission. So I thought this would be the best, and I joined this. So talk about your interest for physics. Were you always interested in physics, or your interest developed when you came to ICER? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was interested in uh, both physics and maths, but uh, there is some underscore for uh, physics. Uh, but uh, this after the two years at ISER, then only we'll choose a major uh, at ISER. Right. So after the two right. years, I was sure that I'm, I'm going to choose uh, physics. Uh, so did you also take biology course during your 12th? Yes. Right. Uh, in my 12th, I had this bio. I, I took bio max. So I had this physics, chemistry, bio, and mathematics. Oh, so okay. I, okay. I, you take all. Then it was, yeah. It would have been so easier I, for I, you. I, I have a, in fact, the, there's a fun factor why I took uh, bio during my 12th because I, I thought that I'm not going to learn bio anymore. So I thought that uh -huh. this is the last opportunity for me to learn bio. That's why I took bio during my 12th and first But <laughs> after coming to ISA, I had to learn bio for the next two years also. Yeah, yeah. Was it difficult for people who haven't taken bio in plus one and plus two? People who haven't learned bio, I don't think they will struggle of, of coming to ISA because uh, everything that we'll learn here at ISA is, uh, is new. So uh, it's it's just uh, we'll, uh, they will they will teach from the basics. In fact, bio. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, there's a course by Ravi Maradhar sir. So it was bio biochemistry or something. So he'll he'll just ask from the slides. But it's kind of a tricky question. We'll we'll use the logics and answer the uh, answer. So it was it was fun answering his question paper. But at the same time, there were some courses in pathways and also it was quite difficult for me because we had to mug up all those things and then write the exam. So so. But I don't think people struggle if they haven't taken bio during the plus one and plus two. I don't think they will struggle coming to ISO because the courses that will that, that they will teach is from the basic and they will ask only what they will they have taught. And that's pretty yeah. easier to crack. Uh, okay. But for those having taken maths, I think that they, that will be a problem for them to uh, be because oh. even physics, uh, they, physics, whatever we learned in uh, plus two and plus one, whatever maths we have learned in plus two and plus one, we will use it in physics actually and there are some courses in IDC which is called interdisciplinary courses where they will teach the tools um, to apply to other subjects for example mm -hmm. we had one of the course was uh, teaching vector calculus and uh, Fourier analysis uh, that you right. can use in physics and the other one was some uh, experimental methods in biology so it's an interdisciplinary course so if, uh, if, you are, if we haven't learned maths it, it would be difficult uh, to study physics and, uh, and also came in some extent chemistry because some courses like quantum chemistry require right. integration and integration. But uh, the maths that we learned, I mean, that maths that ISA teach us is it, entirely different from what we have seen in plus one and plus two because it's a different okay. kind of math, it's an abstract math, pure math. Okay. So maybe uh -huh. I'll accelerating, they will, it's like one plus one equal to two will take one page to two. That's what the math, <laughs> uh, that's the pure math exact, how pure okay. math works. So it's different. So they don't have any course on differential equation in past two years? Uh, yeah, differential equation. I had this IDC course. IDC is the interdisciplinary course. Yeah. So that's another uh, topic. So there, uh, one of the course was uh, teaching how to solve differential equations and integration and also, uh, I think, Fourier analysis. That was one of the course. 
okay okay so how did you find the first two years like the courses yeah but yeah like, it was it was nice. so i told you that uh, i i was confused in choosing maths and physics uh, so uh-huh. for me it was nice to choose between uh, those two subjects and many people also one of my friend uh, he wanted to take physics major but he uh, after after this two co- two year course two year foundation course uh, he took chemistry because he got more interest in chemistry so oh like you took chemistry because he got more interest in chemistry so uh, so so we'll realize which subject is more suitable for us during this two periods so the yeah. but there are cons as well because some people don't end up in a major that they want to because yeah. suppose i want to choose major, uh, major in physics and a uh, number of seats are very less in physics suppose it's 42 and there are more than 42 people who apply to physics and then they will uh, prioritize in the basis of cgpa that you showed in the last two years so okay. in that case uh, the grades matter in choosing the major So I think that's the worst part I've seen uh, uh, in choosing the major. People don't end up in what they want to do. Uh, yeah. I think. Does all the department have this issue, or is it just physics? It depends on the batch. In my batch, uh, more demand was for physics, but I've okay. seen in junior batches uh, people uh, going more into bio and uh, chemistry more than physics. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. So if if a person want to do physics, uh, and if there is more demand in physics, then his CGPA matters. Uh, if you want to do physics oh okay so is there any cut off or something how do they make the selection there is no cut off it depends on if, if there is 42 seats in physics and if there are uh, 47 42 there is a seat 42 they will take and then uh, uh, then they will send that to other uh, majors so, yeah. so that's kind that of is the worst where, that is where yeah. relative marking comes in yeah. when you choose your uh, major So you choose my uh, minor as math. Oh yeah, I choose my minor as math. Okay. I, I, by that time, I got more interested in theoretical physics. So, uh, so I think if, if I want to go into theoretical physics, I should take. Uh, it's not necessary though, but uh, it would be easier for uh, yeah, yeah. me to understand more at math. So, how did you find the course, uh, major and minor, uh, according to syllabus and how it was taught? Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, courses. Courses. Ah uh, yeah. Some of some of the courses was nice. So uh, some of the courses I didn't like because I I I don't think I like that courses. Uh, <laughs> then uh, yeah. <laughs> then max courses was really good. Uh, I like all the max minor courses I took. The professors okay. was very very uh, nice. Uh, so uh, and physics actually uh, our physics department is really nice. But uh, I think uh, more people are working in condensed matter, uh, those kinds of fields than uh, and less people are more. less people are working in theoretical physics so right. there is an unbalance in the department so if more people are coming into theoretical physics that would be nice right now there are many options compared to the time when you were doing your major project right i think there are recruiting happening and that's so nice uh, when i came in only bindusa dr bindusa was working in uh, theoretical minor physics and right now yeah. i think three people are there yes yeah. Yeah, I would say that the coursework at Tyser is uh, really nice, and it will definitely prepare you uh, to pursue your career in business. So personally, it really helped me to uh, prepare for my PhD applications. Uh, the course right. because you, if you apply to PhD, then they will take into account the courses that you did, and also they will in some cases during my application they ask me which book did you follow and which chapters did you uh, learn from that. So. In that okay. case, I think uh, I think we pretty much followed a standard uh, and international kind of course structure, so it it had an upper weight for me. Yeah, so I so you like you chose that you will go in research, but many of your friends, even in like physics majors, they might have like lost interest in research after doing right. major for three years. Like, what right. other options do we have? Like in B after BSMS, what other career choices do people go to? if not uh, research uh, uh, most of the people go for research and uh, they will go for phd and yeah. other than that um, other than that there are there's a the placement cell at iser right now so they will uh, it's it's actively working on make i mean providing jobs and making mm-hmm. connection between different companies and r and d groups at iser so if, oh, even if, in, if even, for even for theoretical even for theoretical physics there is a placement uh, that i'm not sure depend on the vacancies they will they will send us a mail Uh, okay. There's a vacancy in this company. Uh, if you are interested, you can apply to. Uh, some okay. of my friends uh, went into those jobs like that and uh, secured a good position. It's a, it's it's very good positions in those companies. Uh, 
fourth uh, particle physics i don't think anyone uh, would of your job unless uh, you have some programming skills you can uh, you can go into those fields uh, okay. and also max people i think uh, there are lots of opportunities for max people in different companies uh, they can work as quant quant or quantitative analyst or uh, in they they can uh, they can get a good position job and also uh, some of my friends went for mba doing mba uh, and then one of them went uh, to do uh, he joined the flu to do i mean language i mean uh -huh. to do uh, mba in english or something so oh. then many of my friends uh, went to do upsc training i mean uh, they wanted to pursue some civil service job so uh, they okay. they are now preparing for upsc um uh, and uh, and many of them uh, went as tutors in entrance coaching not many a few of them uh, yeah, yeah. but majority went for phd so most of them wanted to do phd and research so, yeah, yeah. Uh, majority of people i know also went for phd so i didn't know yeah. what other options people are taking so i just wanted to know what people are doing. Uh, yeah right. so, so uh, like people who are now preparing for uh, civil services does this uh, psms in i sir does it help like, i don't think you can ask help. like what if i just do bsc instead of wasting my time in five years so these kind of questions will come right instead right, of right, wasting right. five years i can just start preparing for uh, upsc uh, just after 12 like because right. you can't prepare for upsc when you are studying in i because then you will fail you have to like give your 100% then you are doing here for so i think when you join for a bsms degree uh, you have to complete the entire five years so even if i okay. at, after the at the end of third year if i realize that i don't want to do science i just want to do yeah. civil service i can just quit because i i will yeah. i will only get a degree after this five year okay. so uh, so i think most of the people who went for upsc uh, got this realization after joining i said so they want oh. they wanted to complete the i said and then then they want went to so it's not I, i don't think it matters i mean the research experience matters a lot more than grades uh, mm -hmm. so there are these internship opportunities that we we can do in between uh, the that academic year so there is summer break where we can do there is like three months summer week and one one month uh, winter break so in in okay. this break we can do uh, summer inter summer internship and winter internship and we can go anywhere uh in india or abroad and then we can work on some projects so it matters a lot because uh when you ultimately when you apply for phds then they will ask the research experience so if you have a very good research background and uh then if it overweighs the grade then uh you can easily get uh, a phd position and if if you if you don't do any research uh during this five years and you just focus on your academics and score a good cgpa uh then that doesn't matter because uh research experience also matters at the end that's right and it also helps in getting recommendations when you are applying for phd positions for example and so where did you go for uh, summer internship did you get the chance to go out go abroad i had an opportunity to go out but uh, covid uh, yeah COVID yeah, yeah i just that was my next question because when you were in fifth year then this covid happened right yeah this covid happened so yeah. during after this fourth year summer break i had the opportunity to go out uh, and work right. with uh, Work, work on a theory project, but I couldn't do that because of COVID. But I continued it online. Huh. Right. It. But it it was difficult to do it online because it lacks this proper discussions and all. And yeah. Yeah. Saying that, uh, also research uh, while doing research will get. Uh, so I chose a major physics. So I I don't know in physics what I'm going to do. So I can do condensed matter. I can do quantum information or anything I can do. but uh, mm -hmm. only if you after doing research or summer internship that we will come to know what you exactly like because in during my first year i did internship in quantum information then my third internship uh, was in quantum gravity so i got to know that this quantum gravity is more interesting for me than this quantum information so mm -hmm. that's how i shifted from quantum information to quantum gravity so right. it matters uh, many of my friends did that some of my friends who uh, who continuously for the last three years she worked on gravitational waves and uh ultimately she did content because she got more interested in content matter after doing a project so right. so, so uh, you will get an opportunity to explore in this five years and uh, get uh, get to know more and then you can finalize on a sub field about uh, whether you are going to work in theory experimental and even, even in theory in what quantum information yeah. or quantum this is really yeah this is really helpful 
is it is amazing right you already know what you are interested in because you have worked in different fields you do three three months of project and three months right. months is like enough to know that if you are interested in something or not in three right. months you will know that this is not my cup of tea so yeah that's right yeah. you work in two things right you work with bindu sir on super gravity ah. you were working and you also worked with matthew yeah i worked with matthew how did you like uh, started uh, the discussion with matthew were you reading some paper and then you uh, this opportunity to go abroad right in uh, germany right. to work with a person called jota kunz and she worked on uh, classical gravity so mm-hmm. uh, so with her i worked with something called teleparallel gravity okay so uh, so so i was i was doing a project with her so then then i come to iso for doing uh, research for one year uh, so when did you go to germany uh like which year no, I, i didn't go to germany uh, because of covid i couldn't go yeah yeah uh, to which year it was uh, end of fourth uh, year after my fourth, after my fourth year okay fourth year summer break mm-hmm. uh so so uh so then i discussed this idea with matthew so mm. uh so initially we started working on something uh some other thing in five dimensions but uh, like after formulating something we got this idea we got some new ideas and, and then uh we worked on it that's what happened it happened after a long discussion so yeah it started with a small out. discussion and uh, yeah it worked out yeah it's actually we we plan to do some something some other thing but uh, in the mid uh, we got something so uh-huh. that result was so amazing so we got oh, oh yeah we got something great so let's work on this then we changed the route and we worked on something else so that's okay. it. it's published now right yeah it's published in prd okay. like two days back two days <laughs> Yeah, that's so great, Krishnan. Uh, congratulations on your new publication. Uh, so you got selected in five different universities in US. Uh, could you just take us through this whole application journey? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll mm-hmm. tell you that. So, uh, so after my fifth year, so I decided not to apply for that year to take a break um, because it was it was so hectic schedule with a major project. Uh, so and also I wanted to complete the project with Bindu sir. So I thought like uh, taking a year of break was worth it because I might have a publication at last. Uh, so I joined ICER after my fifth year as a research project student under Bindu sir. Uh, so during this time, uh, so I prepared for TOEFL, uh, which is an exam that should uh, that we should give uh, to prove that you are in, proficient in English. Uh, so okay. uh, I gave that exam. Uh, so it's out of what exam? Uh, what exam? Uh, TOEFL. to fill us uh, uh, that uh, that's an english exam where mm-hmm. there are sections like listening uh, they, where they will uh, give you a passage and you have to listen that they will say a passage and you have to listen that and they will ask you some questions and we'll okay. we have to answer and there's something called reading where they will give you a passage you have to read this and answer uh, okay. there is speaking where they will give you some topics and you have to speak accordingly and there is something called writing there's a section okay. called writing where they will uh, they will ask you some questions and Uh, we have to write it so there are like four okay. sections 30 marks each so some universities most universities have cut off uh, one, 90 um out of 120 okay. uh, so it's easy for us to score above 100 everyone most of the students will score above 100 uh, okay and uh, and i had to give this gre general exam but okay. i got to know that at last i got to know that due to covid no, none of the universities are taking gre that year Oh no! So I had to give the answer, but it it was of no use. Uh, okay. Okay. Then, uh, uh, then uh, actually, uh, actually in US uh, there is an application fee uh, for universities. In Europe there is no application fee. Applications are free. Uh, but in US each universities uh, will have to pay an application fee. It varies around five thousand to ten thousand. So, okay. uh, so you have to limit the number of application. Depends on your funding. Uh, so uh, I had. I applied to so for I limited and I applied to just ten universities and some of the universities I got fee waiver so I I emailed them uh, if there is any fee waiver please let me know so they emailed me if there is any fee waiver and then I got fee waiver so uh, first step first step one should do for PhD application is to shortlist the number of universities that you are applying so that's a, that's the biggest procedure uh, you have to email the professors ask them if there is any vacancies you have to see if this is a thing that you want to work in or uh, that you want to do. So I wanted to do string theory, so I, I searched for universities with professors in string theory. So I emailed them and uh, made a list of uh, like ten universities. Then I applied to each university. So I had to prepare SOP. 
which is a, which is called a statement of purpose. So in which you have to write why you are applying for this PhD and what make you capable for applying for your PhD. So I, right. so I have to write uh, all the projects that I did and uh, how I ended up uh, ended up uh, ended up completing this fifth year and why I wanted to do PhD there. And uh, there's another thing called C CV. CV is the uh, it's another important thing. Well, CV right. everyone knows. Uh, it's your resume, and uh, and and the other th other the most important thing is the letter of recommendations. So we need like three, minimum three number of letter of recommendations. Which so one of my referee was Bindu sir, and other was the uh, professors I I did internship with. Um, then uh, so with all this in hand, you apply, and then uh, wait for the results. That's fine. So. so out of ten, you got in five. Yes, uh, I got in five. So. Uh, uh, so uh, out of this, I chose Northeastern University in Boston. So, uh, so uh, initially, I was also interested in this uh, university because there it's like five people working in string theory, and I also wanted to do string theory. So okay. uh, and also there was doing some modification in, in string theory using machine learning and all. So uh, it, it it was nice. Uh, and also I talked to Bindu sir, and he also asked me to join Northeastern because he also liked Northeastern more than other universities. Uh, okay. So that's how I ended up choosing Northeastern. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, this this part will be very helpful for a lot of people. Like even four yeah, years of PhD. Yeah, I don't know. No, no peace. In US only there is peace. And also at that to Virginia Tech and they email me back that you don't have to submit any uh, application fee. There was an application fee of seventy-five dollar or something. Most of the universities a standard amount, seventy-five dollar. But it depends mm -hmm. on the uh, ranking of the universities. For University of California, it's like one forty dollars. It's around eleven okay. k, uh, okay. so it's pretty much high. So, uh, but in some universities, if we nail them, that uh, uh, we couldn't pay this fee, uh, or some financial problems are there, we couldn't pay this fee. But I really wanted to be a part of this community, or uh, I wanted to join this university. Then they will definitely, most of them will definitely uh, give you fee waiver. Okay. So that works in most. One okay. could do that as well. So you said uh, they were not taking JRA this time. So what was their selection criteria this time? How were they selecting? Right. Uh, so uh, without so US universities, they they right now decided that they are not going to take not all of those, but most some of the universities, not some. I think half most more than half of the universities they are saying that JRA is not the deciding factor uh, to be in the graduate school. So so okay. initially there was a cutoff for GRE like out of 340 you should score like 320 and depends right. on if you have more more GRE score it's likely that you will get into one university but mm -hmm. uh, right now they are saying that it depends on one day of the exam it depends on that day when I write the exam if I didn't do well in that day it's like uh, we are screwed up and also GRE mm -hmm. uh, the exam fees was like 14k registration fee right. for GRE if I wanted to write GRE I had to pay 14k and then I write GRE for just one single day and depends on that day how I do well or not right. uh, so, so I, I I don't think uh, every university will take GRE next from next year onwards at least oh, nice. at least uh, uh, at least half of more than half of the universities are going to waive GRE so that would be oh, helpful nice. for yeah. Or is it in US or everywhere like even in Europe uh, GRE is in uh, GRE is in uh, GRE is valid only in US and Canada uh, okay. In Europe, we don't have to give GRE, and even in Germany, uh, we don't have to give TOEFL as well. If you are if you are mm -hmm. coming from an English uh, a, a university where English is the primary language, then uh, we don't mm -hmm. have to write TOEFL as well. So mm -hmm. only in US, this this much application procedures are there. In Europe, it's uh, much more easier. Okay. We we mm -hmm. just have to find the right professor, and because of this application fee, we have to shortlist the number of universities in yeah, US. Yeah, Okay, Krishna, and have fun. <laughs> Bye, thanks. Bye, Madhu. Bye-bye.